So, morning guys. This is the second part of my vlog for the King Arthur Art Station Challenge. And due to popular request, I would uh, like today to talk a little bit about how I incorporate renders and uh, put them into my images. So, I'll, uh, I'll talk a bit about this image that I'm currently creating here. We can just have a bit of a better look at it. This is the image that I'm currently developing for this Art Station Challenge and I use the renders, images and painting. So for this image, this is my render. So for this image it's not fair, like it's the biggest amount of renders and mostly it's images, but my, for my second submission for this challenge, mostly it's renders. So I'll try to break down how I use renders and how I can incorporate them. So let's just have a bit of a better look. So all this is created in Maya. So this is a, <coughs> sorry, this is a basic geometry I created in Maya. These things down here is just images and we painted on top some paintings. And then the wall is also just images and some <laughs> bit of relics you can see when you get closer. But these are just images and, and paintings. So it's a combination here uh, in general, like this is the render, image, and then painting, and then image again. So I'm trying to merge all of these things. I'm trying to get the best of both worlds. So. It's actually just recently that I've started to really experiment with 3D. So I uh, went ahead and bought this beautiful software called Octane Render, which is really, 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 really good. And it's really easy to get into. I had a couple of tutorials with the JAMA downloaded from Gumroad. I can really recommend it. It mean, explained everything to me. So in a weekend I was up and running. So this is the uh, base model that I made in Maya. So it's, it's, as you can see here, it's really, really, really basic. It's just basic uh, shapes, but it's enough to give some information. And what you get in here in Oxen Render is that the, you can use the render passes. The render passes give you a shadow pass. You can have all these passes that you get out. Um, and it's really, really handy when you then work in Photoshop. And you can see all the passes in here and you, oops, oops. You can choose all the passes that you, you need to get out. These information passes, information passes are just like a blast to work with because they give you all this information that you can then work with inside Photoshop. So I can show you in Photoshop how this would look. So what you get out of Octane Render when you render out is that you get all these passes out. So you get the beauty pass, which is this one. It's just basically the render with uh, the environment behind it. Then you get an information pass, an object ID pass, meaning that you can then let me just get these rasterized. Basically, you can just select this, go to your beauty pass, create a mask, you know that mask? Oh, shit, no, it wasn't valid, <laughs> sorry. And then pop in whatever you would like in the background. So now you're basically, you're already good to go with, um, with the background. So let me just off screen for a second, grab my resource folder. And I'll get my photo packs. Just a second, guys. I will just get an image. This is probably not gonna match, but just to show you. So, whoop. so there we go. So now you have the render inside this environment, and then you can start to play around with what you got here. So let me just extend this up a bit so we've got some background. Whoop. So it's not hurting our eyes. So let's just, for, for the sake of it, let's just try to paint up a little bit like this castle. Let's see if we can put it into this environment without too much fuss. So I basically have this uh, very nice little cloud brush that makes these happy clouds. And it's really easy to work with. It gives this a little bit uniform cloud, so it's it's something that has to be it has to be done carefully, otherwise everything becomes a little bit too bland. But it's good to it's good to start out with. So right now, what you can see here is that I have my layer mask. If I can just disable it, you'll get the render uh, the environment again. I can just sh show you inside Octane Render. If you go to the main pass, then we have the daylight environment as I set up here. You can just see it in the sun direction uh, over here. So for you guys who are familiar with uh, Oxen Render, it's all node based, meaning that you can plug whatever you want into it. So I can copy and paste this actually, and I can just pop this into a new slot, meaning I can experiment with the light, which is really, really great. I can say, I want more of this kind of 
uh, long shadows. So I go to my uh, shadow layer and then I can see like, oh, this is interesting. I can also play like, do I really want some dramatic side light to it? Yeah, sure. I can get this out. Then I can render this out and then I can use the shadow layer inside Photoshop so I can get some really interesting results. But let's uh, jump back into Photoshop. So this, again, I'll just enable this. So this is my beauty pass straight out of Octane Render. So this is really, really handy to work with. So what I, I'm a huge fan of, and I, and this is no secret, I really love photos, and photos are the best to just get started. So I really, um, I really love Pinterest actually. Pinterest is a great place to start because Pinterest lets you choose an image, for example this one, and then it just suggests you like the next 50 images that looks like this. So for example, this one, this is really, really great to get some details going. So for the sake of this one, let's just try to work with this. So I just create new layer, um, apply a layer group to it, and I'll just uh, add a little bit, whoops, too much, a little bit of uh, texture to this, just a bit, just so that it doesn't look so bland. So what I can do now is I can, I will sample a little bit of the background just to get the tone in the same direction as the background and maybe up here it will start to get a little bit lighter. So now I'll just with this brush which is just like a scattered brush I'll just add a little bit of texture to it so because this is one of the things I realized I, I tried to put in the stone textures I took this one and I started scaling it down and down and down and down. At the end, I just realized it became pixel noise. So what I did here instead of just, I'll just add, add the noise uh, of a brush instead. It's way easier to work with. So one one of the really beautiful thing also, now you can see there's a shadow in this one. And actually I got this render target past sunlight out, straight out of Octane, which is really great. I'll just take it back up this and then just crunch this a little bit more because now I get a really nice mass to choose from. So I can get the light side of a building, for example. So I'll just take this, select this one, I can make a new layer for this guy, and then I can just go ahead and paint in sunlight if I want, for example. So now it makes, me, it, makes it really, really easy for me to select all the things that are facing the sun. Now it's like for this background, for example, it's not really evident that there's any sun or anything. But let's, for the sake of it, say that the sun is behind here and it's like just peeking over the mountains through the clouds. So maybe we get this like either late sun or early sun that just pokes through and just illuminates the top of this building. And then the further we get down, maybe we'll just burn it into this orange. It's a way too have hard brush. So let's just burn it into this orange and then we get it, take it further down and it becomes more of this muddy uh, red color towards maybe some of this ground level. So this is uh, this is how I would blend in blend in uh, light and shadow. So again I've selected as you can see here I've selected the I've selected the light side of the building so I can inverse this selection and get it to the dark side of the building. Let's just say good morning to Yannick and our company dog Squeaky <laughs> who just came from the door. So now there will be a little bit more fuss at the studio, but I hope you don't mind. So now I selected, as you as you saw before, I'll just unhide this. I've selected the dark side of this now, everything that is in shadow. So meaning that I can crunch this in if I want to. I can really take this into a more dark and take this down so I can get a more clear division between light and dark. I just have a dog on my side now. Hi, Scooby. Come on. <laughs> and I can also, like, if I want, I can start to add a bit of um, this ambient light that is here, I can uh, I can add some of this here in the top because maybe this will be a little bit more affected by whatever environment we have. So I'll just maybe blend it a bit. But what we also do have here is that I can take this one, I can take this uh, beauty pass again. I'll just, oh, didn't we get this one? I'll just, ah, sorry, because there was a selected. I'll just take this one again. So this beauty pass, I'll just crunch this a little bit and then I get an ambient occlusion pass out of it and I'll just maybe crunch it with levels also like this and then I'll just desaturate it and now I got a ambient occlusion pass also I could also take it out of um, Octane 
but I think this is also quite easy to do like this. So now I just, from having almost no information because I painted it on top, I get my information back again by adding this pass on top. I put it on multiply so it sort of burns. I can also put it on soft light, which is a bit less brutal, but multiply goes really well for ambient occlusion because it just needs to burn into the shadows. I do have a mask here. So what I could do is on the mask layer, just start to paint it a little bit out because it, it was a little bit brutal maybe. So I'll just paint a little bit, whoops. Maybe here, I, like in this area, I really want it dark, but what, whatever is, let me just get a layer where I can scribble. So we'll try again. Anyway. So this side of the building facing out would receive everything from this ambient we get further up we would start to get a blend of atmospheric like all the things that is in the uh, in the sky there's a lot of dense uh, cloud and fog probably so it would get faded out but these crevices in here they would get more like less light from this ambient source here like this would shoot in but it will not really touch this that much so what i can do here is on this mask i will try to not paint out that much uh, so if I do like this, it becomes a little bit too much, but I can paint out a little bit that everything that touches or that faces this way. And also this one up here, for example, I believe that this will bounce uh, here, this hits here, hits here, hits here, so it won't be that dark up here. So I'll just paint this out a little bit, just a bit. Same here, we'll probably have a lot of sunlight on this side, so this one will not be that uh, dark. So I'll just paint this out a bit also. And same here on this side. So basically, like this is a really, really good start. So let me just show you how I would use these images. So I have this grabbed directly from Pinterest, just pop it into the layer, and then basically I just press and this is like the best little trick ever. I press uh, V for move to, and I press shift, and then I press the key next to the shift on the right side. I don't know what that's called, a little line key. But this lets me cycle through uh, blend modes. So as you can see over here, these are the blend modes. So this just this key and uh, this combination of key just let me blend through, uh, cycle through, which is really great. So if I press uh, the same shift and zero, uh, zero key, let me, uh, let me shuffle the other way so I can do like this, and this, and this. So this is really, really great. So I'll basically just take this a bit down because it was a little bit too big. So let me just say, I really like these windows. So let's see what we can make, or maybe this line here actually. So let's just see what we can do with this. And uh, we'll just get doo -doo -doo -doo. maybe something like this. And this could actually also be part of the layer group. This could also be part of the layer group. I'll just get rid of these. So now we just cycle through. Oops. There you go. You get some really interesting results. Um, so actually, I'll just now this is on darker color, meaning that everything that is darker on this image, um, this layer 44, everything that is darker than things that are underneath will shine through, meaning that it's only the windows, only the crevices, only the uh, the ambient occlusion on this layer will actually shine through. So now I'll just, I've uh, um, warped it in so it fits with the perspective more or less. I, if it, it doesn't fit here, it doesn't fit here, so it fits somewhere in here. But still, I can like sort of see where it fits. I think here would actually be interesting. It, it sort of fits with my render underneath to some extent. Some of it is fitting out, some is not. I'll just make a copy of it, group it. And then I became super big fan of masking lately because it's a, like, it's a river, like, um, it's a way to de delete something and not really delete it so I can paint it back in again and I can delete it again. So in a way, it's really good. If you can't make a decision, just mask it out because then you have made a decision, but not really, which is, of course, a little bit of in between, but yeah, it's good. So, for example, here we have a little bit of tower. I don't want it here. So I just paint this. Maybe it's not f fully out. Some details are nice. So I'll just slightly paint it out. <coughs> and here, maybe that was nice, actually. Put a little, little 
So what are we looking for here is these things called happy accidents. Some people are trying to not touch happy accidents, but I, I believe like if you hit something really nice, just roll with it, go with it, see what it can it, what it can do for you. So already here, like great start, really uh, nice. I mean now if I have this selected, maybe it, it's a bit too hardcore up here, but probably it will fit here. So you see this, oh, that was really nice. Maybe a bit too, a little bit too light. So just take it just a notch down. So something like this. So I will just go ahead and open something in the background. Just the same guys. Because I have my Pinterest say, site here. So uh, what Pinterest is really great is that you can build these libraries of things and you never really know what you can use. So I have all these things that I've gathered over time and one of the things I found that I could use for this one, for example, was my pipes and tubes uh, library. So I have this library of pipes and tubes, but it, it, it also suggests other ideas of factories and stuff. So basically like this is completely hard surface, is sci used for sci-fi normally, but I found that I can really use this because if I, as you can see, click forward, I find this. This is really, really good because it just, it's just surface noise basically. So what you can see here, if I use it in blend mode, I'll just find the mode that sort of fits. There you go. It, this is really, really epic. I mean, this is really good. You can use this almost straight out of the box. There's some things that needs to be painted out. But other than this, this is like just random noise, but it gives some sort of idea that something is going on on the surface. So super, super, super uh, useful. And just paint it out a bit. Maybe it's a bit too he hefty up here. A little bit too much here. So something like this. And let's just take the last one, this one here. Just I'll just try to recreate a little bit what I did in the challenge. So here, get this on here. Let's see what uh, multiplier mode or uh, what kind of blend mode would fit. So maybe sometimes, sometimes the blend modes are not really there. So what I can do is I can also, um, I can if I double click the layer, I will go into layer style, and down here this is the best thing in the whole world. It says blend if, and this layer will blend if, and then you can start to say. Everything that is lighter than this value, take it away. So I mean, I can start to scrub this down. I press Alt, I can actually get a little bit of a feathering. So I mean, I would keep some of the things, but not everything. So now, for example, I keep this, put a layer mask, and I paint this out because I don't need it. And I paint this out, and I get something going up here. So this is like a, a, a rough version of how I did it. And, and you can see this little arch, this little, Arch and my arch on the 3D render matches pretty well actually. I'll just put it there. It sort of enhances each other. It's just like pure coincidence as usual, but good, co good coincidence. I can take it here, shift it in the other direction. Let me just, I'll just align uh, using this line in the render because I don't really have perspective lines, but I'll get it here for free. And then I'll get it here, take the layer mask and then just paint this out here. And I start to have a little bit of a backside to it. I can take it once more, and then I can scale it even further. And I got something going on this side as well now. So now I have these backsides. I'll try to keep my main details on the light side. So this is a thing. Choose whether or not you want the details on the light side or on the shadow side. So everything that is in shadow should be a little bit more subdued uh, versus the the light side. So again, I can take these two guys and just dial them a little bit down, just so that they is not completely not there, but it's it's there but not really <laughs> somewhere in between. So what I have here is I will try now. Let me just see if I can get something working because I'll just show you what I'm, I'm working on here. So, so what I have here is I have uh, from photobash.org, I have bought one of their packs. Um, it's really recommendable because it's high uh, res photos, it's taken professionally. So you don't have to bl bl 
search in the net, net for all these like <laughs> low res images. So, I, you know what? I'll try to go with some of the little bit low res uh, version. I'll just see what I can do with this one. So let me just build a base for this guy. So again, go in here, uh, mask, everything with a mask. I cannot stretch it enough because you can be really like rough like this, just and then invert and then paint it back in again if you sort of regret what you're doing. So for me, this is a great way to experiment. Let me just get a little bit harder brush, a little smaller. This, is, this brush is really great for just like carving out stuff like this. It gives a good, na nice natural feel because the round it becomes a little bit too soft, everything. So, yeah, this, whoops. This is okay, I guess. So, let me, <coughs> let me just paint this out too much. Uh, I'll just duplicate. So, this is gonna be a little bit uh, buggy, but I hope it's okay. So, I'll just paint in a base for this. And I'll just do this, which is like completely murdering the image, but I hope it's okay. Just go with the flow. I'll just paint it a bit back in. Just actually, here we don't want that much light. So I'll just paint this out, get a little bit of the shadow here. So I hope I'm not a fin. Oh. This is. Uh, Probably part of the. Let me just get this, get this away. And then you can see in here there's a bit of the render poking through. I'll just paint this out. Uh, something like this. So again, completely murdering the image. I hope it's okay. <laughs> Nobody will get offended. Something like this. I can also, if I, oops, if I want, I can just take a, the stamp tool S on the keyboard. I can just paint a little bit back in again. Basically, it just gives me enough information to grab something and then just roll with it and then go with the flow. Actually, the light here is too hard because we don't have light down here. Like, remember, this is from up here. So what I want to demonstrate with this is that one of the next features that I found and fell completely in love with, this is like one big love story of features that I found recently in Photoshop and that I'm sharing because I just find them tremendously useful. I just apply this layer mask actually to get rid of this. So something like this. I mean, this is enough to 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 say what I want to say uh, about it. So one of the features I found is up here in image adjustment, match color. So this one is tremendously powerful. Also, if you get it right. So let me just find the source is this image that I'm working on. Untitled. I uh, didn't save it. And then I'll just say, actually, which one did I take? Sorry, just a second. Scottish Highlands. Sorry, it was this one. Adjustment, match color, untitled, and Scottish Highlands. Okay, come on, that was right there. So what it does is it tries to take this image and match it to whatever color is behind here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you can fade between the original and, and the one you're working with. So what I can see is that this one is way more desaturated and is towards the red. So let me just, I'll just choose something in between because then it just mixes between this that I think is a bit too wild and, and the, the original colors. So I'll just take something that is in between. But then from here I can control B, which is the balance, uh, the color balance. I can just start to pop in a bit of the colors from the landscape behind. And I, I figure that is somewhere in this range then some of the colors becomes a little bit too crazy. So I'll just start to paint in again. So this is a little bit of a balance where you, you get some and, and then you have to paint back in again. But I mean, it's a good start. And then let me just get rid of the base of this one. And let me just get rid of these. Just take this away. So in a sense, this is how I would approach it. I mean, look aside from this uh, mess that I made down here, then this is my base approach. This is how I did this. So grabbed uh, photos online, painted over, matched the colors, painted on top of the renders, took some Italian uh, cities on hills, bashed them in here, found some photos uh, from photobash.org, put them here, 
went to medieval market, took a lot of photos, like awkwardly walked around after people taking photos all the time. But it was really nice for this one. I had a good friend who wanted to pose in some armor for me. Uh, a lot of stuff like this is basically how there's like no real magic to it. It's just a ginormous amount of images matched together. But I hope this serves to show that this is how I do it. This is how I would uh, approach an uh, image like this. So I hope this has been uh, good and I hope you learned something from this. And otherwise I'll see you in the next one and hopefully it will be informative as well. So see you around guys.